Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even your time. Utilize Squarespace email campaigns to drive sales and engage your audience. Introduce your brand to new subscribers with welcome emails, announce upcoming sales, or send out a discount code. There are built-in analytics to measure the impact of each send. They have such flexible website templates. It's so easy to get started by choosing a template and then customizing it to look and do whatever it is you need or want. And a huge help is their analytics system. This is where you can gather and use all kinds of insights to aid in helping to grow your business. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com backslash Olivia Rizalate to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you once again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and let's get into it. Uh, hello is this thing on hi <clears throat> i'm sick it's not covid it's not the flu it's just me <laughs> oh isn't that nice um i am completely out of tea and honey from when my partner was really really sick and i got like a bunch of that so I'm about to just go, um, I placed like a grocery order because I'm not, I'm, I don't want to go into a grocery store, but because I got negative tests on everything, multiple negative tests, by the by, took one at home and then I went out and I took a, I call them a professional one. I don't quite know the diff, not me breaking my hair tie. Uh, okay. One second. I stole this one from my partner. Don't tell them, okay? You promise? I swear. <laughs> so, what was I even saying? I don't even know. I, You know what it isn't? Important <laughs> to the story. So, I'm going to go get a drink. Um, I'm going to get two. Because I have a little gift card. <laughs> and I'm probably not going to leave the house again for the week. Unless I go to... Like, I'm hoping to go to work on Wednesday. That's the plan, guys. That's the plan here. It's so cold, but it's not cold at all. It's really fun. I really like that for me. But every time I turn the air up, then I get too hot. So what I've been doing is keeping the air on a normal temperature so that everyone else in the house is fine. And then I just like have a bunch of blankets. We put on a winter blanket because y'all saw like because I got Brooke Lennon on the last video. They set the new sheets. So we did new sheets and we went ahead and got out like our winter Sheets at the same time. Granted, it is 72 degrees. My dad just texted me and asked me if I ended up calling it. Mm, I did. So, yeah, that's it. Um, I took a little, a little Claritin, and there was no clarity given to me with that. So, it's just a cold. And I get sick maybe once a year, if that. And... I am like a baby with it. You know how there's that meme that's like, oh, I had a child and now I know what it feels like for my husband to have a cold. I'm the husband. <laughs> I hate it because it happens so infrequently because I'm not willing to get sick. I will avoid it at all costs, but then just it just sometimes happens, especially working in school. You know, it, it just is what it is. I'm gonna get one drink that's half-calf so I don't have a headache, and then I'm gonna get another drink that is the medicine ball tea or whatever it is at Starbucks so that I can feel my throat again. Doesn't that sound nice? 
Um, these glasses are driving me a little crazy with the reflection, so maybe I need to go get the anti-glare. I don't know if it's too late for me to get the anti-glare on them, or if I just... If I get another pair, get the anti-glare at some point, whatever that is. Um, which would be, oh, just shy of never, because why are glasses so expensive? <laughs> I'm still thinking about that. I picked them up. I had already paid for them, but I was just looking at them like... Not the people. I wasn't looking at the people. I was looking at the glasses as I tried them on like... You better be so worth it. It... Hey, I haven't had any headaches, any dizzy spells since I can see properly now. And I'm not squinting all the time to try to see because I thought I could see, but turns out I really couldn't see. Did you know the trees have individual leaves? I found that out with these. <laughs> so anyways, I am reading... Oathbringer, and I finished my first ever cross-stitch project, uh, and I really, really like it. It's the bookmark I'm currently using right now, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm listening to the audiobook of this while reading along, and I am tabbing in it, but the tabbing is quite infrequent now because I'm, this is the third book in Stormlight Archives, so I think what I'm going to end up doing is I am going to uh, listen to the audiobook and cross-stitch some more bookmarks. I have about seven more pattern pressed ones that I want to do, and what I'm hoping is I'll do that many, and then I'll be so good that I'll ascend to a new level, and that level will be that I'm capable of doing them by counting and not having someone guiding me with the, the pressed-on pattern. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but that's the goal, and I believe in speaking things into the universe. So, I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to be, like, the best cross-stitcher you've ever seen. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know who holds that thorn right now, but get ready to lose it, because I have entered the arena of cross-stitch. <laughs> uh, anyways, I... I'm a little delusional right now, so we're gonna just go get that, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go grab my mask, oh my god, and then I'm gonna go get that, and then I'm gonna come back here, and then I'm gonna listen to the audiobook, cross stitch, that's it, that's all, oh, and I'm gonna edit the vlog, great, that's cool, I'll do that first, cause that's like, actual work, so I'll do that first, and then, I'll sit in bed again, so, Yay! Go team! Woo woo! Okay, I wanted to show you my current project and the current read next to each other. So, I have done this up here, this one, then this one, and this one here, and then this one down here. The back is much cleaner than my last project, for sure. And I think it looks a lot better. And then here, I am on now, page 325. So yay, I'm gonna get something to drink and then I'm going to sit down and do more listening and stitching. Hello guys, how are you? Um, I am still a smidge under the weather. Oh my goodness, why do I have these random red spots? One thing that the car is gonna do is highlight every issue. Cool. Anyhow, I am venturing out to get some medicine and then also I want a tea that is just scalding hot. And did I happen to land myself at the pharmacy Starbucks duo that has a bookstore right next to it. Yes, because today is really safe for a curse for true love. So, if I'm gonna be trapped in the house all day, because I am, because it's rainy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that book. That's what I'm gonna do, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah. So let's go get all the things that I like actually need, and then let's go get the thing I want. Obviously the thing I want is medicine. <laughs> Priorities. 
priorities. Yeah. <laughs> we have them. Um, I need to be off camera as much as possible when I'm sick. I'm... What's going on? When I get home, though, I do have to finish editing my vlog. So... That will happen. I am ill, but I'm less ill, and I am FaceTiming the bestie, and I am exporting this little vlog, thankfully. And then I'm gonna be starting this baby, and I'm so excited. I also picked up this guy, because it was on the same table, and I read the little synopsis, and it sounds so good. I made sure it wasn't gonna be in a book box. So I think that I'm right with that, and yeah, it's YA, so I was thinking I could give it to the library um, once I have finished it, so if any of them want to read it, but obviously since I'll read it, I can make sure that it would be okay to be in that library, but yeah, I'm excited for these two, and I'm more excited for this video to be done. Hi guys, um, I am home from work. I did go in today. I still don't feel 100%, but that's okay. We've got a panting Jake, which is what always accompanies me on these fresh at home clips. But I have three books that I'm in the middle of to update you about. These are the three that I'm in the middle of that I'm currently paying attention to. I'm in the middle of 10 books. Again. So anywho. The first one is Little White Lies by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I'm just reading this at night right before bed, and if I get free time and I just feel like reading something a little bit more funny, I'm reading this. This is about a girl who is a mechanic, and then her maternal grandmother finds her and says, hey, I'll give you 500k if you come do this debutante's thing. So that's where I'm at with that. I'm literally like 10% in, so I don't know a whole lot, but that's what I've learned thus far. Then, of course... I've started A Curse for True Love, and I have made it to chapter 10, 90 pages in. This is what I'm going to be continuing tonight. I am going to have this be a short little update because I just am in the mood to read. I don't really want to do anything else. I just want to read and read and then keep reading. So that's what I'm going to do. And then for Oathbringer, I have made it to chapter 39, page 411. So it's that tiny dent that I've made. <laughs> this book is so ginormous, but I'm listening to the audiobook of that one and then physically eyeball reading these two. And it's a good little time. I'm having a good time with reading right now. Um, mainly I'm in such a reading mood because it's super rainy outside. I'm super sleepy. I'm still kind of sickly and then also like very anxious. So. 
that's that's the check for the week no for the day <laughs> on Wednesday and then uh, hopefully I'll have some just major groundbreaking things coming up I don't think I do I think I have a very chill rest of the week to be honest which is very nice and I hope is the case because you know when you go back to work after being sick and you're like ooh wish it could have been one more day just not because I wasn't even doing anything like fun <laughs> like the most fun I was having was updating the blog and reading when my brain could focus on that and listening to an audiobook when it finally didn't split my head and have to do so so like it's not for that it's just I feel like I am going back early than I should because I still don't feel great and I think that that's going to make it take longer to feel better but I don't have a option there so that's what I'm doing this is what I'm reading and I'm gonna go do um dinner we're having tacos and I'm going to get Jake's and Ginger's food ready for them so that they're eating by the time that everything gets here. And yeah, that's that's all I got. Kind of a boring update, but it's okay, I guess. It has to be. It's what I got for you. <laughs> guys um so i was trying to film a cute little clip of me like getting into my heart and, like closing the door <laughs> and i spilled all my water on me <laughs> i was fully planning to not have a coffee today even though i said thursdays are gonna be i saw a teacher on instagram that was like thursdays and tuesdays are my coffee days that i can get it from the gas station a drive through wherever that's not home because those days suck and I'm like that's kind of true because Monday it's just like let's get into it Wednesday is like a hump day you know we're halfway there baby let's roll Friday is freaking Friday Tuesday is like oh my god Monday extended edition Thursday is we're not there yet Hi guys. Oh my god, why does my wrist look like that? I'm home. Duh. Uh, as you saw, I went to work today. I'm very sleepy. And I went to the library and I picked up some books. So my hold came back around for my roommate is a vampire. We'll see. We'll see about this one. I've seen cute things, heard cute things, so I think that I'm still gonna try it. It just depends on if I'm gonna get in the mood for that. And then, yes, I have my hold for this guy, which I'm very excited about. This is Cassandra Clare's newest book. And I wanted the library edition because first of all, I had a hold on it because I, I have been trying to get at like the beginning of every hold for every book ever <laughs> that I want at my library or this is now their latest problem, them being my librarians uh, in my city, county thing, <laughs> however it's divided up by. Uh, I learned how to request a purchase. Oh yeah, baby. We're making moves. Are they all accepted? Actually, thus far, yes, they have been. And I love my library for that. But this one was already there and they were buying three copies. And two people had a request and I said, tack me on. Because I forgot that I ordered the Illumicrate edition, which I'm very happy that I have now. And then I believe Fairy Loot has one happening. So there are those. But I didn't really want to read that. I like the US binding because it's just like that that's just so good that's just so good sorry am i gonna not be able to film in this area anymore because this like reflection is a lot to me um but yeah 
So Oathbringer is going to get put on hold because this one has uh, a due date because there's a line. So I need to focus on this more. Also, I need to focus on Dark Age by Pierce Brown because that is also due back. Again, I think at this point, I may just read my own freaking copy. <laughs> just call it done because clearly a lot of people are requesting it and I don't want to be in the way of their great time at reading that fantastic series but I'm very excited for this. I know it is a entire fantasy world she's created. It's not based in our world. Everything that I've heard from other people kind of reminds me of a V.E. Schwab book. And I love those, so I'm excited. I haven't finished a Dr. Shade of Magic trilogy, but I love what I've read. And now for what I'm currently reading, A Curse for True Love. Let's just go ahead and take this guy off since we're home and I'm not going to be using it. I do enjoy this. This is a very cute little cover underneath. But as you can see, I've made quite a bit of headway. I am on page 285 now, chapter 34. I am going to hop in the shower. It's a hair wash day. So I'm going to do that. And then I think that I'm going to settle in with some old reading sprints that I found on YouTube. And well, technically on someone's Patreon, but via YouTube, obviously, and then finish that up and then start on Sword Catcher. And I will let you guys know, obviously, my thoughts, my feelings, all of the things like that. But yeah, I'm, I'm back into like a fantasy mood. And I do want to talk about this, Miss Girl, a little bit, uh, Curse for True Love. I keep forgetting the title. Kind of funny because there's a book in here that no one can remember. <laughs> but this trilogy, I think it's so good and I've noticed when people don't enjoy it as much I think that they are going in expecting a YA romanticy feeling akin to like The Cruel Prince which honestly is one of the best YA fantasy trilogies. I'm gonna reread it and revisit that third book because I remember hating it but maybe I was too harsh. Maybe I could have calmed down you know. Sorry, I had a split moment freak out that I did not turn on the mic. And I did, obviously, because you're still here. Um, but I uh, I really love that trilogy a lot. And I really like this one too. However, this one is different because I do feel like if a modern day author were to write a fairy tale more fleshed out and just longer, this is what that would be like. And I really like it. I think it's done really well. I love her writing. Stephanie Garber's writing is so good. I love the Caraval trilogy with Caraval legendary finale. Those were so good. And now Once Upon a Broken Heart, The Ballad of Never After, and then A Curse for True Love. I just love it. I just love it a lot. And even with like our little antagonist in this book, it's bothering me because I'm just like, oh my god, shut up. But it's not bothering me to a point where I'm like, mm, I hate it. Awful, awful. Because it, it plays into the role of like a fairy tale. Like it, it doesn't feel out of place. It doesn't feel annoying. It doesn't feel like conflict just entered in to have conflict, if that makes sense. So I'm really liking it. I think it's done really well. Um, the one thing that I did like fully out of context text, one of my besties is like, I feel as though a certain somebody in this book is what people claim Tamlin is in the Axar series, and I just, I don't see it. Like, it's worse than this to me, personally. So, those are all my little thoughts about this. I'm very much enjoying it, very much happy. And next week is Iron Flame week. No, no, next, next week, yes. So when you're watching this, then next week is Iron Flame week, and that's very exciting for me, and probably for you, if you're watching this, because a lot of people also agreed that <laughs> fourth thing was good when I was talking about that in my last vlog. So, yeah. I'm pretty happy with my reading at the current moment. I'm very, very excited to get into this. I was so happy to see my little library text that said, it's on the whole shelf. And I said, I'm on the way. Oh, it was so good. So good. My throat still hurts though. And also I'm still like that kind of tired that you get when you're sick where you're just like, oh my God. I did literally bare minimum things today and I'm exhausted. So anyways, let's go shower, do those fun, fun, fun adult things like the dishes and dinner, and then we will read and that will be the fun part, the actual fun part. I'm excited about it.
Hello guys. So I have just finished this book and I did my skincare so that's why I look very shiny. I'm as reflective as my glasses are currently but I wanted to give an update on this with my just first reaction thoughts. They are technically gonna have details of the book in it so I'm gonna put up like a little frame thing right here so when you see the frame that means that I'm talking details about this book. I'll also vaguely hold it up here like this. And when that goes away, you'll be good to go. So, final warning. Final warning. Uh, this book was supposed to be the finale, the epic conclusion to the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. That was for Evangeline and Jax. My problem is we had a third wheel in here for way too much. Now, I don't feel like we should kick Apollo out completely, but I don't think it was necessary for him to have his own chapter, like his own POV. I think when you're doing third person multi point of view, the thing that makes the sense to me is like they're just separated. So one that I can think of that does this is Sarah Janet, Throne of Glass and Crescent City, where they're on either different continents during a lot of the books or they're different parts of the city or they're on different little missions within the book and it makes sense to have them there because they have their own subplots. Uh, all these people's plots are together and even with Apollo, you don't get insight into like what he's scheming to do. So I don't really know why his plot or his POV was there. And I just feel like it took away a lot from what I really wanted to read about, which is obviously going to be the main characters. And yeah, that, if I was still writing books, it'd be a four because that's not enough of it to like ruin the book for me at all. And I don't think that this was a bad conclusion to the trilogy. The pacing didn't seem off to me. It just kind of was a little bit inconsistent at points, but I honestly, that's kind of like a lot of books are like that for me. I feel like, especially with fantasy, which is what I predominantly read, it's very typical for it to start slow and fast, basically. And that's what happened here. It just was a lot faster than I thought it would be. But again, I'm honestly not upset about that. I don't like a dragged out ending. I do like a, like a dot, 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 or a vague ending. And so I don't hate it. Honestly, I'm not even really talking spoilers, am I? I don't know. It's just a little bit more specific to the book, so I'm, I'm keeping the frame up anyways, just in case. But I just, I loved the writing style. I think that her writing style is phenomenal. It had me reading so quickly. I read this in, what, two days, I guess? And it's almost, it's 10 pages shy of 400 pages. But I also read the acknowledgements and an epilogue, y'all. And a bonus ending, so that's a lot for me. That's a big book for Elmo. How many pages is that total? Oh yeah, it is 400 pages total. So it's 3.99, but I was taught to round up. So it's 400 pages and I read that in two days. I'm pretty proud of myself about that. Not gonna lie to you. Cause I technically started it Tuesday night, but really I didn't read a whole lot. It was Wednesday and today. But anywho, I just think, ugh, let me take the frame away. So non-spoiler thoughts. The writing style is phenomenal. I love Stephanie Garber's writing style. I will read every book that she puts out. There are a few characters we get a little bit more insight to that I'm hoping perhaps we will get more books in this world. There was kind of a little like nod, a tip of the hat that made me feel like we might. So that would be exciting and I hope for that. But overall, honestly, I do feel like it's a solid ending for the trilogy. I think I just hate one of the three characters that are the main <laughs> and that's what I'm bitter about now that this is why I wanted to like record a little bit of it right after I had read it to kind of talk out my thoughts and feelings too because I've told y'all before I'm trying not to go on reviews and things and kind of mix my own feelings with what I see of people's because a lot of the time when I read reviews I'll be like oh my god that's true and then I'm like okay but did I actually feel that way or do I just see how that's like a valid critique or mention because that doesn't have to be the same thing you know what I mean like it can be a valid thing but then me also be like mm, but I don't think so <laughs> you know so I I kind of like talking about the books right after I read them so I can do a little bit of that but I guess I think this would be either be a 4 or a 4.5 but y'all know I really don't rate books unless it's a 5 so it's definitely not a 5 but it's like just shy of one so I'm not a hundred percent sure 
on that. But I also just love this trilogy in general because I do really feel like in the Caraval world, your reference to these like fairy tales, and I, I feel like she just wrote a fairy tale. I really do. I feel like she just decided to make the third or this trilogy, these three books, into a little fairy tale moment. And I love it. I thought it was so good. I honestly think Stephanie Garber kind of thrives in not necessarily rewriting fairy tales, but writing within the fairy tale vibe, genre, writing style, like just this lyrical prose. I don't know. It was really good. And I hope that she continues to do that because she does already have very purple prose writing, very flowery writing in the Carval trilogy, which I love. I love descriptions of, listen, I am, I am just like other girls. I love descriptions of the food and the dresses and the setting and the atmosphere. I'm very much willing to look past a plot hole for a good atmosphere. And I think that that is like something she does really well in the Car of All trilogy. And then this spin-off trilogy, I think she's even better at a more lyrical feeling of writing. And so I also think that's something to take into consideration with her intentions with writing this is it feels more like she did want to essentially write a modern day fairy tale, which would then pull from, you know, obviously we've already read fairy tale wise, and that is not going to follow the same structure as probably what we're used to in, you know, fantasy, romanticy, YA fantasy, whatever you want to describe this one as. And I think she did really well because sometimes in fairy tales, like the villain's just a villain because they're a villain. You know what I mean? And I like that because sometimes I don't want to think a lot either. You know, you know what I mean? Girl? Like, I just don't. And right now that's the case because I'm tired and I'm home from work. <laughs> and so I didn't have to. I was just like, no, he's, he's a bad guy. So that's it. And then the other one's like, well, he's a bad guy, but like, is he though? <laughs> so anyways, it was a good time. I enjoyed it. I'm excited for my Waterstones edition to get here and be able to have that match my collection there. But now I'm going to go make the infamous, it's not infamous. I mentioned it uh, literally once on my channel the entire time I've had one. The dessert coffee my partner and I have, we got these blueberry scones from... You know how Amazon does like a grocery delivery? So I think they're from technically Whole Foods. Yes. I was trying to think if it was a brand that's there. I know it's from Whole Foods, the store, but I think it's also just Whole Foods that makes them. You know how they have that bakery section? They're so good. Now, I did try to get the take and bake. <laughs> that's a thing they have. I love rhyming too. And it was bad. It was a dud. Don't do it. They're blueberry scones. Well, we got the vegan ones. And so... The vegan blueberry scones that they have in store are also good. These are not that, but they are good. These ones that you take and then you put them in the freezer and then you like let them thaw out and then you put them in the oven and you bake them. It was not good. I don't know what it was. It just, it wasn't good. I Sometimes I just think they have a better oven or a better chef. I don't know. We don't even have a chef, so that's probably the case. But they're really good, so I'm going to go make that. I'm going to make us a little coffee and then I'm going to start in on the sword catcher. I'm very excited. Have I told you, have we had this talk about how much I just love the feeling of library books? Like just that sound, you can't beat it. Like it's just joy. And also look how crisp and clean and perfect this book is. I'm the first one to read this edition. And with that being said, one of the things I don't do is, and not judging you if you do it, I found crumbs in the little library books that I have been checking out for my library as of recently. Live your life, you know? You know what I mean? Um, but I try, I don't like to eat when I'm reading in general, but I definitely try not to eat when I'm reading library books just in case. I don't know how allergies work, but just in case. <laughs> what if I'm eating something with peanuts in it? You know, I don't want to ruin someone's day by having a a reaction to a library book but I am excited to read that I think I'm gonna probably shut down everything for the night aside from a reading and just have a little cozy night and that's the plan you guys I'm so happy right now I just feel like this was such a cute little fairy tale bedtime story and now I'm gonna probably go get my heart hurt by Cassandra Clare who's been hurting my heart since 2013 so <laughs> super cool super cool why does my hair like not look bad right now actually or are my standards low? I don't know. You let me know. Goodbye. He's so cute.
Welcome to the cozy time with Jinji. Oh. Featuring her favorite place in the house. AKA the only place in the house. Yeah. She only loves this as much as her food bowl. Everything else, nah. Right, Ginger? Right? Look at you. Hello, guys. Um, it's nighttime now, obviously. I am... Ginger's right by the mic, so if you can hear her snorting and snoring, that would be why. I am sitting down now to read some of Swordcatcher. I did start this today, and I've read almost the prologue, which if you know Cassandra Clare books, the prologue was 39 pages long, which is shocking to no one. She is nothing if not long-winded, but I don't mind it because I actually really enjoy her writing. So far, what I know is we have a character named Kel, who is going to be the sword catcher for the Prince Connor. And what that means is basically he's the bodyguard. That's all that means. He just protects him. And sometimes he steps in and pretends to be the prince and they have charms and little magic trinkets that can help him do that. And um, yes, I do think that's interesting. So far, I really do like the characters we've met. Kel and Prince Connor seem cool. I don't really know what else the plot is going to bring about. I, again, y'all know I don't really read those, especially with authors that I already know. I'm just like, it doesn't matter. Your writing's good. I like you. Let's roll. So, we're rolling and I'm enjoying it so far. I'm going to drink my little decaf after dinner a latte and continue reading this and that will be all for me now uh we don't have any plans except um there's a little ant issue by annabeth's enclosure so i have brought her inside for the current moment and i'm gonna be building her a brumation bucket which is essentially her hibernation station that's what that's gonna be and it's getting delivered tomorrow we've got some soil out in the garage that i'm gonna use and make that but i get really stressed out <laughs> about insert anything here but with her i get stressed and i freaking hate ants so i'm tired from work work was really good and it's really it's going really well and i'm really happy with it and you know everything was fun and fresh there that was tiring and then coming home being stressed granted self-induced kind of and then just i don't know liv i am living baby i'm tired so we're gonna read and chill and oh i'm gonna drink a lot of water too because i i need to do that i need to do that so okay that's it that's all Guys, I just became conscious of the fact that the Christmas slash holiday slash winter, how do they call them? I think they call them the holiday, but isn't October holiday? No, it's fall drinks. Anyways, the holiday flavors are coming to Starbucks November 1st. When I tell you guys, all of this fall will be gone November 1st, midnight, and Mariah Carey We'll be blasting from that e record player over there which yes there are tissues still on it from being sick let's not worry about the small things let's get into my book hello guys good morning i am coming to you looking a bit of a hot mess i suppose oops but um i'm getting my little clip because i'm gonna put my hair up we're going to get food with some of my family today and that is in we're gonna leave in like 45 minutes I think so honestly I don't know if y'all are like this but depending on how much time is in between so if I have like an hour before I have to go somewhere I don't have any time I have no time to do anything else not true but that's how my brain works I'm like oh nope gotta gotta get ready to get ready and be ready to be ready <laughs> And if you're wondering, um, Liv, what does that mean? I don't know. You tell me. 
I don't know. But in my head, it's like, basically, it's already time to go. It's literally not. But I'm just like, I can't chill. And then also, it's been pouring this morning, as you saw. We went to get our little duo quiffy. And um, yeah, it's pouring. I did put on press on nails. These are my Halloween week ones. They're mummy and ghost themed and the thumb is just the same as this nail, but I think they look so cute. Like, look, are you kidding? Look how cute they are. They're so cute. I love them so much. Um, I will link down below the Instagram of the wonderful artist that I get my nails from all of the time. I just think that she has the best the best ever. She literally never ever have I gotten a set. Even she's included like some freestyle ones before when I order them and I order them like every like the season before the next season kind of thing. Uh, not always but when I can I do and so she'll just sometimes throw in random like freestyle ones that she's made for like TikTok or something like that and they always are so cute. I have one that she sent that was more of like a like a flowery, summery one, and we were just going into fall. So I'm excited because I have that saved for next summer and I'm definitely gonna be wearing them because I feel like I do a lot of neutral nails and I'm not gonna lie, I do prefer neutral nails, but sometimes it's fun to try something else. But anyways, I thought it'd be nice to put on my little, little set. I also have a, um, like a black French tip set that is, I suppose we could consider, you know, a little spooky season nail, but it is um, subtle enough that I think I could wear them whenever. And I think also, last time I checked, I'm gonna do it anyways. So that's that. No, you didn't ask for it, but you know what you're always gonna get? Unnecessary updates here. Um, I am so confused because, so I wear my watch to sleep so that I can monitor my sleep because it's really important for, I mean, anyone's health, but I definitely have to monitor mine. And for some reason it says I slept eight and a half hours last night, which could have been because of the rain, but why do I feel like drained? I just feel exhausted and I don't really know why. Um, but we're gonna go to Target before we go to food because we don't have any umbrellas and we need an umbrella. So we're gonna get those. And honestly, if it's not raining when we get to Target, cause I was just gonna drop my partner off at the front so that neither of us had to like get soaked and then come do a wraparound, do a wraparound. Cause if I go into Target, it's gonna be an event, always. Doesn't matter what, it just will be. But we'll see. If it's not raining, I will venture in. Jacob, please, please. He's whining extra because he didn't get to go O-U-T after breakfast, which he always does. He goes, he plays with his toy, he goes O-U-T, and then he comes inside and he rips that toy up, and then that's his like morning routine and evening routine. He's a very routine-based dog, uh, but he didn't get to because it was pouring. And I let him out, but he ran out to that yard, came right back and was like, pardon? Why'd you set this up? And it's like, how do I tell you? <laughs> Wasn't me. Uh, anywho, let's get to the reading updates, shall we? So I am on chapter two. I know, making big moves, not to brag, but like also, could it be you? I don't know. Uh, page 55. It feels like I've read so much of this book. Like, Cassandra Clare always feels that way to me, though. Of like, it just, her books are so, I don't know what it is. And it sounds like I don't like them. I do. I do like them. And I also like this magic system. And I like this world a lot. I I gotta be honest, y'all. I don't think I'm very picky with fantasy. I think that I just love fantasy and I love going to like new worlds and having little adventures and whatnot that I'm really not that picky with it. I'm not that picky with it. You know, I think I'm more picky with thrillers and mysteries and then also with just contemporary novels, but I'm really not picky with fantasy. I'm just living, laughing, loving. The only fantasy I'm picky with is fantasy romance or romanticy, that kind of thing. Not romantic fantasy. Romantic fantasy is a different thing. But fantasy romance and fan row and romanticy, they're all the same thing to me. And I'm a little pickier with that because I like a lot of fantasy in my romance, which is why I tend to lean more towards romantic fantasy, which to me relies heavily on the writing style. 
and the overall vibes more so than just a fantasy world with minimal plot and a big old romance. Like, I don't care about that. I want the plot. I want the world building. I want, like, if they get together in the first book, I'm kind of checked out. Except for with Fourth Wing, I'm not. But I'm also, like, I don't trust any authors anymore because who knows what's going to happen there. But this also makes me think of, I want to catch up on the Plated Prisoner series because I have it over on that shelf. That's why I looked over there. I didn't just look over there for my cue cards. No, it's like sitting right there. I want to catch up on that because that, let me tell you about a fantasy romance series that's so good. They don't, nothing like truly fantastical on the fantasy romance aspect of things happens till book three. Y'all know I love a slow burn. And if you're gonna give me multi-book slow burn, that's why with, oh gosh, what is that one that Aaron recommended? One of the books is called Blood Solace, but I can't remember what it's, it, it's like that fantasy romance with vampires. Blood Mercy, I think it is. I wish if they had like not gotten together in the first book and it was gonna, cause it's like eight books or something crazy like that. I would have been so into that, but it was too. As soon as I were like a thing, I was like, oh, I'm bored. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> but the world building and the political intrigue and the magic was so interesting in there. I don't know why, why the romance ruined it for me a little bit. It didn't though at first because it was so slow burn. It was so good. Um, What is the Carissa Broadbent one? Daughter of No Worlds. Oh, so good. So much better than whatever the heck that other one, The Serpent in the Wings of Night. Listen, The Serpent in the Wings of Night wasn't necessarily bad. And now that I'm further out from it, y'all, I think I might read the second one. I think I'm gonna try to read that second one because I own it, might as well. I genuinely think that my vibes might have been off when I read that book because my best friend rated it five stars and she's quite picky. Like she says she's not, but she is. If you're watching, come on girl. And I just feel like we have such similar tastes in books. Like I had to be off, I had to be off. I'm not willing to reread it, no thanks. But now that I'm not, reactionary right from it. I think I might do it. Thanks for having this talk with me, you guys. On a little, a little nice Saturday. I was watching Miss Rachel from Raven Haired Reader and her bookshelves. Oh God. First of all, how is a person so relaxing? I don't know. Can't relate. Like she's just the cadence, the vibes, the look, like all, it's just everything. It's everything, all of it, all at once. And she is like my fantasy romance queen. Like I just, if she mentioned something, bought it. If she looks at a book, I already own it <laughs> because I just trust, I just trust that much. Uh, the only thing is though, I haven't watched the latest vlog and I did see that she mentioned in our bookshelf video that she DNF'd Hurricane Wars. And then I saw someone else on Instagram that I follow as an arc of Hurricane Wars. So I guess that was weeks ago at this point. They gave it five stars. Actually, they gave it infinity stars, which I'm like, what does that mean? And she DNF'd it. I'm like, oh my God, what's the truth? I guess I'll have to read it. Oops. It is one in one of the book boxes that I'm subscribed to though. So when that gets here, we'll do that. I'm telling y'all, I'm in such a fantasy mood though because I really start acknowledging thriller, like creepy book season in August that like I'm over it by October. I'm done. I don't want to see another pumpkin. Honestly, seeing all this right by me, get it out of here. I'm ready for fa la 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 la. <laughs> Christmas <laughs> and then also all the fantasy. I want all the fantasy. I, I, I want it. So I'm going to go put my shoes on and put my purse on even though I'm going to be sitting in there for an hour like that. That's fine. Just so that I feel ready. I feel prepared and then I'm just going to read this until we leave. But yeah, I am liking this. I like the writing style a lot. You know what? I actually have noticed Cassandra Clare has very consistent writing style. And I don't feel like that's the case for all authors, so that's why I mentioned that. It's very consistent throughout all of the Shadowhunters books, but in here is the first time that I've really seen her do it differently. And I do feel like the Shadowhunters books, while they're YA, I wonder what in here is going to distinguish this from her YA books versus this being an adult fantasy. Because I don't know if she's just like, I made up the world, therefore it's an adult fantasy, because I don't think that's enough, but maybe there's gonna, but there's also murder and mayhem. That's what I was gonna say, maybe that's what's in here. I don't really know. I really don't know. I also though, am wondering if we're gonna get, I'm also wondering if we're gonna get a romance because let me tell you, one thing that Cassandra Clare can do is write a good romance. I really do think so. Now, listen, The Mortal Instruments, she had some ups and downs, okay? But I'm willing to look past it 
Not for the infernal devices. I know the girls love that. Snooze fest of a series. Sorry. It's bad. The Dark Artifices. Hello? But nay. The last hour is even more so. I'm still halfway through Chain of Iron, y'all. I have not finished it yet because I'm not ready to be finished by it. I just know it's gonna hurt my feelings a lot. Because <laughs> I have never felt so attached to her characters as quickly as I did the last hours. Like, I, what's going on? I don't know, y'all. I don't know. But I do already like these two characters too, Kel and Prince Connor. I love them. They're so funny. They're so, like, I love their banter together. I love the the duo, the vibe. Also, her world building in here. I like it. I'm into it. Now, this underground kingpin thing, though, that's going on, the rag picker king. Where'd you get that name from? You know what it reminds me of? The rat from Barbie and the Nutcracker. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go. Because that just came to mind. Because when I hear rag, I thought it, I read it as rat the first time. And I was like, sorry, what? <laughs> he does, he picks what? It's not that. Um, it's not that, by the way. That's what I read it the first time. Sometimes I read too fast with my little, my little eyeballs. And I, I, I definitely replaced a letter that changed the whole word. But um, yeah, let's go put on shoes. Okay, okay. And see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Um, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. The future is bright. 